Don Giovanni, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozarts Opa aller Opern, ist für mich eine der größten künstlerischen Leistungen aller Zeiten. Over two centuries, Don Giovanni has been continually restaged and reinvented in the world's finest opera houses. The finale is terrifying and unforgettable. If you see one opera before you die, make sure it is this one. Aber wie hätte sie wohl 1787 im Jahr der ersten öffentlichen Aufführung ausgesehen und sich angehört? Um dies herauszufinden, bin ich hier nach Prag gekommen, wo die Premiere stattfand. We are going to restage Don Giovanni's finale to understand the challenges Mozart faced, so we can all see and hear it as the first audience did. I will find out how the instrument sounded, what the performers wore, and the special effects Mozart used. Er war nicht nur ein begnadeter und außergewöhnlicher Musiker, sondern auch ein sehr mutiger Künstler. Er nahm die Konventionen seiner Zeit, transformierte sie, spielte mit ihnen und so schuf er sein ganz eigenes Werk. Ich bin Rolando Villason und werde mich in die Welt des 18. Jahrhunderts begeben, in der Mozart lebte. And bring us close to Don Giovanni, as Mozart himself imagined it. The house was packed with 1,000 people. The emperor in Vienna was unsure about whether, you know, the court would like this piece. Also, machen Sie sich stark klar, es geht los. I became an opera singer after someone heard me singing in the shower. Mozart's operas are among my favorites. They express what it is to be human, what brings us together, and what pulls us apart. I have become fascinated with the maestro and immersed myself in his life through his music and through his letters. I have performed in Mozart's opera Don Giovanni many times, though not as the star of the show, Don Giovanni himself, that part was written for a baritone, a deeper voice than mine. Don Giovanni is a womanizer whose sins catch up with him when he commits murder and unleashes vengeance from beyond the grave. My first stop in Prague really has to be the Estates Theatre, where the first performance took place on October 29th, 1787. I can just imagine these cobbled streets rattling with carriages carrying Prague's nobility, coachmen helping ladies cross the muddy roads without ruining their finest dresses, the tickets sold out, the box office shut early, the excitement in the air. And me? I have dreamed of walking onto this stage. History was made here. It's hard to find the words to describe the feeling of, of being in a place that means so much to music, but as well to humankind. Because this opera is about the human soul. This plaque marks the spot where Mozart conducted that night. Mozart received three standing ovations that night. He loved applause. 
I will just sit here, <laughs> put my Mozart cane. Ah, it's so wonderful to be here. It's very special, very special. How did people behave in those days during the performance? Respectfully, silently, very quiet. People loved it. Mm -hmm. They could appreciate it. Mm -hmm. But if they, if, if it was not their cup of tea, they would boo. Yeah. <laughs> in the middle of it, they would just, yeah, they would comment on it. Sometimes even throw mm, objects on yeah. the stage, you know. Nice. The Russians are sent. I'm sure that they sat in the boxes mm -hmm. around and up there was the gallery, mm. but there was just one. And there the people were standing because there were the less, uh, you know, of, uh, you can say, the burgers or... They didn't pay uh, middle class, <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, also the floor of the theater would be flat. Sort of think about uh, the candlelight. Oh, yeah, the tell boxes. me about it. <laughs> so we have their electric <laughs> candles now, and they shine a lot brighter. Mm. And then uh, we didn't have this central fantastic uh, crystal <laughs> uh, chandelier there, yeah. I think. Uh, so there was a little less light. Mm -hmm. It was dim. But the people knew the singers, no? They were familiar yeah, 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 with yeah, the singers. Sure, they were sure. familiar, of course, with Mozart. So there was like a very... A very familiar uh, feeling between the audience yes, and what I was going that, on on stage. Uh, that's why that Mozart liked uh, Prague since his success of Figaro, mm. that he was coming like to his friends. Mm. I think he was very sure that the people who came uh, to see Figaro, mm -hmm. they would come to see his Don, Don Giovanni. Giovanni. <laughs> I think he must be here, you know, yeah. still, oh. because I think that he had some very lucky moments of his life here. Mm. Uh, and he felt that he was appreciated. And I think this was in the time when he really needed this mm. as a person, as a man. When Mozart and his wife Constanze arrived for the premiere, he was only 31, but a living legend at the height of his creative powers and he wanted his genius recognized and celebrated. So why was the premiere in this theater in Prague? The maestro was used to the prestigious venues in Vienna where he lived and composed. Mozart thrived in the age of the Enlightenment when the traditional social order gave way to reason and new freedoms. The American Constitution was being framed and Mozart's previous opera, The Marriage of Figaro, had been a subversive comedy about the nobility. Warum kann Mozart hier nach Prag? Z dopisu Mozarta Otce Leopolda víme, že Wolfgang získal několik pozvání, a sice od orchestru Pražského divadla, a také od členů vznešené společnosti milovníků hudby. Tím důvodem hlavním pravděpodobně byla um, opera Lenoci de Figaro, ale také víme, že Mozart měl Praze řadu přátel, kteří také věděli o jeho nezrovna příznivé situaci ve Vídni. Mozart v té době uvažoval o tom, že byl do Londýna koncertovat. Tak taková, takové pozvání by vlastně bylo velmi vhod i pro něj. The emperor himself, Joseph II, had requested a private performance of Figaro in Vienna. But Mozart was always torn between success at court and forging his own creative path. Welcher Unterschied gab es für einen Komponisten wie Mozart für den Hof in Wien oder für die Öffentlichkeit in Prag zu komponieren? Ve Wien war es immer mehr Překážek. Es war potřeba mluvit s mnoha Osobnostmi, immer tam z od dvora, přítomností silné italské kliky, Salieriho, dalších skladatelů, zpěváků, spousta žádlivosti, závisti, tedy věcí, které v Praze vůbec nebyly. Naopak v Praze byl Mozart hrdina, oslavovaný miláček publika. Mozart byl ganz glücklich hier in Prag. Warum wollte er zurück nach Wien gehen? Přesto všechno, Vídeň byla jeho domovem a on velmi dobře věděl, že vlastně to je to nejlepší místo pro něj jako pro umělce. Vídeň byla sídelním městem s mnohem větší populací, s větším počtem divadel a větší, většími příležitostmi pro umělce, skladatele, jako byl on.
Commissions from private companies helped Mozart with his dreams of becoming a free artist, making his living without wealthy patrons. With the creative freedoms available in Prague, Mozart took the centuries-old legend of the seducer Don Juan and created a provocative work of art that would also be a crowd pleaser. The fee was a factor too. Constanze was pregnant with their second child and Mozart was terrible with money. But how was Don Giovanni commissioned? Mozarts Oper Lenozzi di Figaro war in Prag ganz besonders erfolgreich und der Theaterdirektor dachte, hier brauche ich ein neues Stück von Mozart. War es lukrativ für Mozart, diese Auftrag anzunehmen? Eine Oper war immer etwas Lukratives, wenn man sie als erster geschrieben hat, wenn man einen neuen Auftrag bekommen hat. Man muss sich vorstellen, man, das gab ein Standardhonorar von etwa 100 Dukaten. Das ist schwer zu sagen, wie viel es heute wert ist, aber sagen wir etwas zwischen 40.000 und 60.000 Euro, eigentlich ein Jahresgehalt. Das lohnt sich schon, eine Oper zu schreiben und wenn man wie Mozart schnell war, dann hat sich das in jedem Fall gelohnt. Don Giovanni is not a simple boy meets girl, they fall in love, then they both die tragically opera. So bear with me while I outline the plot. Don Giovanni is a womanizing scoundrel with a list of conquests so long that his manservant, Leporello, has a whole area about it. Giovanni kills the Commendatore, an old soldier and the father of one of his female victims. The serial seducer's fate is sealed when he drunkenly invites the Commendatore's memorial statue to supper. Bad idea. The statue shows up and Don Giovanni is sent to hell. Da Ponte wrote the libretto, the text for Don Giovanni in Vienna, with his hostess's 16-year-old daughter as his muse. If only I could think of her as just a daughter, he wrote. He was something of a libertine, as Don Giovanni is. His philosophy was growing popular at the time. Physical pleasures mattered most, morality and public opinion be damned. Da Ponte's womanizing even had him exiled from Venice, not 18th century Europe's most conservative city. But Joseph II gave him an official position in Vienna where he met Mozart. In 1787, the two men embarked on their biggest challenge yet, Don Giovanni, which they published here in Prague. Was wissen wir über die Beziehung zwischen Lorenzo da Ponte und Mozart? Lorenzo da Ponte kam ungefähr zur selben Zeit wie Mozart in Wien an. Auch er musste sich etablieren. Und die beiden haben drei große Opern im Laufe der Zeit erarbeitet. Und erarbeitet heißt wirklich, dass sie zusammengewirkt haben. Wie hat diese kreative Zusammenarbeit Don Giovanni beeinflusst? Wir wissen, dass Mozart und da Ponte ihre Ideen miteinander ausgetauscht haben und vieles, was in der Oper stattfindet, war Resultat von Diskussionen. Man hat versucht, die dramatische Entwicklung besser zu gestalten. Was wissen wir darüber, wie da Ponte das Libretto geschrieben hat? Da Ponte hat Modelle gehabt für sein Libretto. Das Stück ist nicht ganz frei erfunden. Natürlich kannte man den Don Giovanni-Stoff. Er wurde von verschiedenen Komponisten in Musik gesetzt. Und wir wissen zum Beispiel, dass es eine Oper von Giuseppe Gazzaniga gab, die Anfang 1787 entstanden ist. Und Lorenzo da Ponte hat durchaus Ideen daraus genommen. Da, äh, da Ponte hat dann auch vieles, vor allen Dingen die Szene auf dem Friedhof. Das ist seine eigene Erfindung. Und das ist ja das, was das Dämonische in Don Giovanni ausmacht. So, hier ist ein Libretto aus äh, Don Giovanni. Was ist so besonders von diesem Libretto? Das ist das tatsächliche Heft, das die Opernbesucher auch in der Hand gehabt hätten. Das hat man während der Oper lesen können, das Licht war an, man hat es lesen können, man hat es aber auch mit nach Hause genommen, um das Stück verfolgen zu können. Wir dürfen hier nicht vergessen, nicht jeder Mensch, der in die Oper gegangen ist, konnte ganz toll Italienisch lesen, besser als verstehen. Und was wir halt hier sehr schön sehen, ist, dass im Prinzip hier für die Aufführung alles vorbereitet ist, aber anders als bei vielen Opern, die Mozart früher geschrieben hat, ist das Libretto eigentlich erst nach der Musik 
abgeschlossen. Erst nachdem die Oper fertig komponiert war, konnte dieses Heftchen gedruckt werden. Und bis dahin haben Mozart und der Ponte mit Papier und Bleistift gearbeitet. It is said that Mozart wanted Don Giovanni to be a tragedy and the Ponte persuaded him to add some comedy. At least that's the way the Ponte tells it. Whoever's idea it was, Don Giovanni mixes tragedy known as opera seria with laugh out loud comedy, opera buffa, in a unique way. These colleagues of mine will perform our reconstruction of the finale, but here they are bringing to life Mozart's genius elsewhere in the opera. You have uh, performed in a couple of productions as Zerlina. Which one do you prefer? <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends on Giovanni. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about this character. She's getting married, mm -hmm. but then she's, she saw Don Giovanni. Well, it's, it's a noble man. He asked her uh, if, she, if she married mm -hmm. him. So she's very surprised and she, oh, is that true? I can't believe it. And then she's, you know, getting closer and, and, and you know how, <laughs> how it goes. On. No, I don't know. <laughs> With his Don Giovanni, Mozart created a very modern character who raised issues we are still wrestling with today. Why do some women fall for scoundrels? Do Don Giovanni's escapades make him a free spirit to admire or a shameless sex addict? Despite his misdeeds, it's very hard not to fall for him. Don Giovanni is seducing Zerlina, Mozart is seducing the audience, was seducing the audience of that first night with the music he was, he composed for the scene. Was meinen Sie, warum gilt La Cidarem, La Mano, als eine der größten Melodien aller Zeiten? Es ist so außerordentlich, wie Mozart es schafft, zwei verschiedene Charaktere zusammenzubringen. Wir haben Don Giovanni, den Adligen, und Zerlina, das Bauernmädchen. Und Mozart gelingt es, diese beiden zusammenzubringen. Und tatsächlich hat schon das Prager Publikum bei der Uraufführung dieses Stück ganz besonders geliebt. Gibt es etwas, was das Publikum des Tages als musikalisch überraschend empfunden hatte? Natürlich sehr, sehr viel. Das fängt mit der Ouvertüre an. Auf dem Plakat stand Drama Giocoso und es beginnt als ein großes Drama. Mhm. Andere Sachen sind vielleicht die Szene am Ende des ersten Aktes, wo Mozart einen Tanz aufspielen lässt auf der Bühne. Das ist normal, mhm. aber dass dann noch ein zweiter und ein dritter dazu gepackt werden, das ist ganz ungewöhnlich. Warum wird Don Giovanni die Opern aller Opern genannt? Ich glaube schon, dass es ein Höhepunkt in Mozarts Opernschaffen ist. Und gerade diese Verbindung des Tragischen mit dem Komischen ist einzigartig. Und es gibt, glaube ich, auch noch einen anderen Aspekt, weil das Don Giovanni-Thema 
eines aus der Weltliteratur ist und es gibt keine Oper, in der Goethes Faust oder Shakespeare's Hamlet oder so etwas adäquat in Musik umgesetzt worden sind. Hier mit Mozart und der Ponte haben wir eine kongeniale Konstellation von einem Dichter, der für den Komponisten und einem Komponisten, der für den Dichter schreibt und das ist ein Glücksmoment in der Operngeschichte. Mozart changed opera forever. He made the music and not the libretto the driving force of the drama. He was able to translate it immediately. What he was feeling, the emotions, everything is there. And he himself, this incredible force of nature and, and genius, is, is giving us how that feels through music. <laughs> It must have been amazing for the audience to attend that very first performance of Don Giovanni. But would their musical experience have been the same as ours? The instruments that played these very same notes were different than the ones we use today. But how and why? To make our staging of the finale as accurate as possible, The music will be played by Václav Lux Orchestra Collegium 1704. This orchestra is a similar size to Mozart's. The size of the pit and costs kept classical ones at around 30 players. And these are period instruments, so this is how the overture to Don Giovanni would have sounded at the premiere. Hello, Václav. Bravo, orchestra. What you see, we don't have any valves on this instrument. Mm -hmm. You lower the note in closing your hand mm -hmm. in, the, in the bell. Mm -hmm. Just to the moment where we mm -hmm. have it completely closed, then acoustic-wise the instrument is shorter. And with every change of the crook, we have a very strong change of character. Mm -hmm. We have a... Um, So we have the same thing in B, mm -hmm. so we change the crook, and it's very short, and it is more like a trumpet. We have the modern violin here. This E string is a metal string. This is a period violin. The main difference are the gut strings. Mm. So you can actually get really, really soft and nice sound mm -hmm. of the violin, especially on the, on the E string. But then you can also get to the really nasty sound <laughs> on the D and G string. Uh, which is good for Which Mozart. is good for <laughs> Like this. Mozart had written most of the score for Don Giovanni in Vienna. But some key sections were still only in his head when the maestro arrived in Prague. The orchestra received the hand copied overture music just before curtain up. Mozart admitted several notes fell onto the desks that night. But I'm sure that the audience were on the edge of their seats. 18th century overtures were usually happy and upbeat. The maestros added darkness and tension. The late 18th century was a turbulent but also exciting age. Revolution was in the air. Viva, viva la
Mozart had arrived in Prague in early October with only a few weeks to prepare for the premiere. But things did not go smoothly. The first performance on the 14th of October was postponed. If you think my opera is over by now, he wrote to a friend, you are a little mistaken. The set was not ready. The stage personnel are not as smart here as in Vienna, Mozart complained. At least he now had another 10 days to finish the score. Whoa, look at this city. It's just spectacular. And it's not hard to imagine the Prague that Mozart knew back in 1787. The Prague where Mozart was walking with the last bits of Don Giovanni still being born in his head. He must have been quite inspired by the beauty and the mystery of this extraordinary city. Especially inspired to compose that last scene where Don Giovanni is being dragged into hell. During the second act, Don Giovanni went to the graveyard where the man he killed, Il Commendatore, has a statue. And he invites this statue to come for dinner. As we are about to see, that was a bad mistake. Mozart's finale is a work of genius and we want to recreate it with all the drama and excitement of the first night. We've explored the background to Don Giovanni and how it would have sounded. But what would it have looked like? This is Barandov Studios. It's one of the biggest film studios in Europe, just outside of Prague. And it's right here where we are going to reproduce Don Giovanni's defiant descent into hell. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. Here we go, back in time, 1787, the stage. Whoa, fantastic, wow. And it's right here. It will all happen once again. From offstage, this set creates an extraordinary illusion of Don Giovanni's dining room. This set has been painted by hand from 18th century designs as Mozart's was. Hello. <laughs> Hello. How are you? Hello. Very nice to meet you, Yuri. Hello, Yuri. And Yuri. Thank you. <laughs> well, first of all, uh, thank you very much mm -hmm. and uh, congratulations. It's, it's such a beautiful work. How much do we know about the set designer and, the, and his relationship with, with Mozart? Well, we know that uh, the decorations were painted mm -hmm. by Josef Platzer. Mm -hmm. He was quite famous later. This work for Prague was his first major work. Mm -hmm. He became famous uh, because of this. And then he was uh, invited to Vienna. So, the artist uh, mm. you painted, how long does it take to paint? It was very quick, uh, so they did it uh, in 10 days. Wow. Mm. In 10 days, the whole thing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> so is this the set that uh, they had for the premiere of Don Giovanni? We can just guess mm -hmm. from this information we have, but uh, I think it's very probable that it was uh, like this. Very close yeah, to this. Very close to this, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now there's one last vital cast member to meet and more to learn about performing in 1787. You throw with this hand the gesture here. With this hand you, uh, you can uh, throw the gesture here. Then you get them back to your... Professor heart. Helena Kasarova is showing us what Mozart's audience would have expected to see. You reject something. Yes, yes, but you don't use that in and here is our Commendatore, whose statue comes to supper. <laughs> He's, he will be uh, singing our Commendatore, and actually great, yeah. we perform together uh, 
Don Giovanni in Berlin, in Berlin. but in a quite modern production yeah. where, you know, it's, that's, that's the big difference. Actually, today, we performers are told many times during rehearsals in, in the modern productions, don't move your hands, don't be exaggerated, don't play as if it was opera. Mm. <laughs> Which is funny, <laughs> now because like, uh, it's opera. You could put his hand like this, Mm -hmm. you lose your composture also yeah. in your body because mm -hmm. here you were very proud yes. and he's squeezing you to kneel <laughs> and you push him to the ground you push him you try to get up not everyone in Mozart's audience understood Italian and there were no translations to help them along so the language of gestures acted as a kind of subtitle to explain the action it was very good, you feel it. <laughs> By modern standards, some of these gestures are a little over the top. But Mozart's audience, they spoke volumes. From the time we have tens of books on gesture, let's take love. But opera is never about love. Oh, you don't oh, mean that seriously. <laughs> opera is all about love and death. Okay, so expressing love. Yes. So, uh, the first thing that um, you, you would stand in a position, uh, for instance, if the lady would be before you, mm -hmm. on your right hand side, which mm -hmm. is the right side, yep. uh, you would have your weight on the foot, which is near to her, mm -hmm. you would look at her, then you would make the gesture towards her, and maybe at the same time to your heart, with the elbow from, and say, I love you. I love you. I love you. Ah, okay. Yeah, the succession of hands. You love me. I oh, know. <laughs> that's the tenor speaking. Okay. I love you. Yes. Mm, so it would be. Io t'amo. Excellent. Huh? Diese Rollen wurden in einer ganzen Reihe kreativer und sinnlich überzeugender Ausstattungen lebendig. A vital part of Mozart's spectacle on stage were the costumes his characters wore. So I'm looking forward to seeing what we will be using. Every time I do a new production and mm -hmm. I go to the theater, this is one of my favorite places. Look at the hats. Fantastic. You can try your hat. Cyrano de Bergerac. The gesture that goes with this one is this. Madame. Yes. Very elegant. <laughs> Don Giovanni could have been wearing something like this. The fact that these materials are so shiny means that they would reflect the mm -hmm. light of the candle. That is Don Giovanni. Yes. Now Leporello, I'm sure, has the not a uh, so no. elegant costume. Leporello is a servant. Let's see them both together, of course. It makes a difference. Don Giovanni. And uh, <laughs> Now, probably the m most complicated character we had to deal with was the Commendatore. The libretto tells us that he's the white man, the man made of stone. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we are going to go with this. Ah. Nice. And, well, I hope he's not naked. We're actually still <laughs> looking for something for him. <laughs> so we will have to use some sort of paste. Mm -hmm. Now, these pastes were usually made with ingredients that might have included lead and mercury. Oh, so they were pretty extremely dangerous, dangerous mm -hmm. extremely poisonous. Mm -hmm. And we know of people who have, you know, ruined their skin Be forever. And we even know of people who died. This is what we're thinking about for, for Elvira. our Donna Elvira. Women didn't have the luxury of not wearing a corset. Mm. These instruments of torture <laughs> were meant to shape the breast, mm. the back, mm. and the waist of female singers. It was made of linen usually, but inside there was either whale bone mm. or metal mm. 
so that we know that some women were actually bruised by the use of corsets. Let me try one. Let me just to see how tremendous this torture actually is. For once, it's the man who will suffer it. So is it like, like this? Well, no, this is the back. Oh, God. Yes. All those check beers are not going to help, I think. <laughs> the, 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 the goulash. It's not working. It's not working. <laughs> It's nearly time now. Our own premiere is taking place tomorrow. In the finale of Mozart's masterpiece, the supernatural figure of the Commendatore, the soldier Don Giovanni killed, comes to his castle to make the Libertine pay the ultimate price for his crimes. Mozart wanted this scene to terrify his audience. So how did they create a suitably scary atmosphere? 18th century, obviously, no electricity. How did it look? Most of this light was on the stage, inside the scenery. The low intensity and this diffusion made very different uh, feeling or impression, mm -hmm. from very different from what uh, we know today. Mm. Yeah. Kind of dreamy-like, uh, yes. lots of yes, shadows. Yes. Do we know that this is more or less the exact shape of the kind of lights that, uh, that were in that premiere. Do we know some details uh, from uh, theaters which are preserved from 18th century? And this kind of lamp was uh, quite usual, not only in the theaters, but uh, also elsewhere mm -hmm. from 17th century on. The light needs to give us a sense of spooky ambiance, yes. no? Yeah. Uh, the emperor in Vienna mm -hmm. was unsure about whether you know, the court would like this piece. I think in the public theatre, it allowed Mozart to experiment with, by, by mixing effects, mixing smoke, mixing flame, drums, music, etc., etc. All the things that we get as Don Giovanni goes into hell. It's one of the first multimedia scenes. When we see yeah. a, a horror movie or something, we know it's not for real, mm. and yet we can, be, we can enjoy the terror that we get. And I think Mozart does that, mm. in, that in that scene at the end. We have built a trapdoor for Don Giovanni to go down to hell, just as it would have worked on that October evening. And here we are, next to our trap. This is of interest for Don Giovanni because this is on the left-hand mm -hmm. side of the stage. It is sinister. Sinister, the left hand. Dexterous, the right hand. Oh, from left. So <laughs> this, is, this is the left-hand side. You want to try it? Yeah, is it ready? It is. Okay, let's have a ride to hell. Giovanni will end his days. <laughs> it's uh, sinister. Okay, take me out of here. Der Wunsch, das Publikum in Angst und Schrecken zu versetzen, fand in unterschiedlichen Inszenierungen immer wieder neue visuelle Umsetzungen. During a performance, Don Giovanni's doom is no laughing matter. How did they recreate the flames of hell? What they used to do was to get a, uh, an oil burner mm -hmm. and put brandy in it. Because mm -hmm. in the 18th century, burning brandy was the hottest flame that they could achieve. And literally, <laughs> blow powder called lycopodium across the top of the flame, and it exploded in a fireball. <laughs> And of course, that was a reason why so many theatres burned down. The atmosphere was so dry, the scenery was canvas. You open a door to try and get out, for, to escape, and of course, you sucked air in and the theatre became a fireball. So, pretty dangerous stuff. Okay. We've got the flaming bowls of brandy, we've got compressed air, and we've got lycopodium. And let's go. Wow! <laughs> Great, isn't it? <laughs> It's far too dangerous for us to do that. But many of the pyrotechnicians were actually military men. And they used rockets. They used, imagine taking a rocket, cutting off the stick, and just allowing the flame to go up in the air. Which, luckily for us, is very similar to the kind of 
much safer effect that modern pyrotechnicians uh, can use in the theatre. <laughs> Great. Whoa. <laughs> Everything is ready for our finale. We have shortened it a little, but otherwise, it is as Mozart's audience would have seen and heard it. The props are in place, the gestures rehearsed, the period instruments tuned, the stage is dressed, the candles are lit, and the pyrotechnics primed. Können Sie die Atmosphäre, bevor die erste Aufführung von Don Giovanni hier in 1787 beschreiben? Jedním slovem byla vzrušující, protože Mozartův pobyt byl velmi pečlivě připravován. Jeho příchod byl oznámen v novinách a také veškeré události kolem opery byly v novinách zmiňovány. A není pochyb o tom, že přátelé Mozartovi se velmi snažili, aby všechno probíhalo co, co nejlépe. Od Felich alles nach plan? Ne zcela, protože premiéra byla vlastně plánována na 14. října, ale došlo k několika odkladům. A to patrně jak vinou e, zpěváků, kteří nebyli ještě připraveni, ale dost možná také ani Mozart neměl vše ještě zkomponováno. Pokud víme, tak ta premiéra byla nesmírně zrušující a publikum bylo se nadšeno. Orchestr vítal Mozarta jak na začátku, tak i po, e, po skončení. A e, i noviny, e, jak v Praze, tak i ve Vídni, ohlašovaly velký úspěch. Mozart superstar! Určitě. <laughs> Don Giovanni. Hello. <laughs> toy, toy, toy. Poor Mozart's premiere was delayed again when a singer fell ill. The maestro's frustrations poured out in a letter. Everything dawdles along here because the singers are lazy. At least he had another five days to put off writing his overture. And finally, here we go. Don Giovanni is dining attended by Leporello when his jilted fiancée Donna Elvira bursts in. From there we are going to jump forward to a brilliant example of Mozart's genius for ensembles.
Regia mai venuta, ma farò quel che potrò. Le prello l'ultra cena, ma che subito si porti. A padron, a padron, a padron siamo tutti morti. Vandeli! Scusate. A torto di viltote, tacciato mai sarò. Risolvi, ho già risolto. Per... Dite di no, dite di no. I am very moved. It was, it was more than what I expected. We don't do theater like this anymore. To have the chance to reproduce it exactly like that was, was very special for me as a performer. This journey has shown me that Mozart cared more about the here and now than posterity. Don Giovanni is all about the immediate experience the maestro could give his audience. During this wonderful musical adventure, I have felt that I have been walking next to the ever joyous spirit of Mozart. Viva Mozart, viva Don Giovanni. <laughs> And one, two, three, cheese, tequila! <laughs>